Hey everybody, this is Matt with Onyx, and today I'm going to walk you through scouting a unit and kind of figuring out my A, B, C spots and where I'm going to go when I get down there. So I've never been to this unit, and it's in Colorado. It's pretty small. I didn't want to spend a full day e-scouting a whole unit for you, so I'm going to try to get through one unit here that's pretty small. I'm going to be focused on elk here, but I think this applies to mule deer too, and basically any time of season, really. Uh, my goal usually is to get as far away from other people as I can and find sneaky spots to get in. So that's what you're going to see me do here and how I'm going to focus. So let's go ahead and zoom in. <clears throat> um, like this isn't really a secret. I don't know anything about this unit. I just picked a small one here. It's in Colorado, unit 361 here. So let's go. Um, I'm going to go into Colorado, and usually these are all on, but I'm going to turn on our private and our public lands. We'll see that starting to fill in here. So I've got that. And we can zoom in here a little bit and see we got a lot of forest service in the southern end of the property uh, and then some BLM and state lands. Uh, we can check possible access. Um, there's none in this unit and any walk-ins for Colorado, not in this unit either. So we don't have to worry about those ones. So let's just start here. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is go to the trails and rec layer. And let's turn on the trails. And I like to do the trail slope. Um, so visually I can see the trails a little bit better. And then let's do the MVUM, motorized roads and trails. That'll get you all the open and closed dates for the forest service roads. So we'll turn that on as well. And we can see there's some, some roads going through the unit here now. So <clears throat> I'm just gonna zoom in and I'm gonna focus Let's just start on the, the edge here. Okay, so I'm just gonna take a look here and we've got the Forest Service roads coming in in, in um, purple here. And if you click on them, you can also get these opened up and see the open dates for the roads. So we've got uh, June through uh, November 22nd for these roads in this unit. So they're all gonna be open. So I know those roads are gonna be open. Now, I don't know if other people I'm going to follow the rules on these other roads, and I don't really know that until I get there. So um, let's zoom in a little closer here. And you can use the aerial imagery to kind of come in here and see these roads. Kind of tough to see here, but you can see it looks like an intersection here, and it looks like there isn't really a road going out. So hopefully people are just obeying these travel restrictions. Okay, so now with the roads on and the trails on, the first thing I'm gonna do is just come in here and start marking some waypoints and then I'm gonna add radiuses to them. So I wanna mark waypoints at all these different access sites and then make some radiuses to map out um, how far I think people are gonna hike in general and then see what's left for me to get into. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take a couple of minutes here, make a whole bunch of these. Um, We'll kind of cut in and out as I'm doing that, and I might explain some of the reasons why I'm making some of these, but we'll just start getting this whole map laid out for you, and uh, we'll be back in a couple of seconds with that laid out. So I'm just going to come in here. I'm going to make all of mine purple uh, for this hunt, and I'm going to put access uh, just for where this might be the access site where I get in. So I'm just going to save a whole bunch of these now. Okay, I'm gonna put one, looks like we got a Forest Service road that's open through here. And this road looks pretty open. I'm guessing it's probably closed at this private, so I'm gonna put one there. And if we look at the aerial, let's zoom in real close here. You can see we got a pretty good road coming in, and I'm not sure what happens at this private gate. It's not really gonna matter because the road kind of peters out here anyway, so. Even if it goes that little bit extra, I won't even drive that far. I just park right here and, and cut around. So we'll save, save a spot there. I'm gonna come down here. So it looks like here's a sneaky spot. We got the highway cutting across the river. And then looks like there is a little parking area here. And, but I don't think this road goes through Hard to know if that's gonna be open or not. It's on BLM, uh, so we don't show open and closed BLM roads, so that could be open or not, but let's put a spot here for investigating.
access site there. Okay, you can kind of see I've mapped out some of the access sites now just based on the roads and kind of where they go around. Um, and then this north part of the unit, it's got quite a bit of roads in it. Let's go into 3D here. It doesn't have quite as much cover. Uh, looks pretty open. There's some wildlife unit stuff here. Um, this could be really good deer country. I, I don't know, so I would definitely you know consider this. If I was deer hunting here, I think for the elk, I'm going to focus down here in the Forest Service and continue scouting this and make my ABC plan down here. So um, <clears throat> let's just start. Kind of the first spot that really caught my attention is if you watch some of my other videos, um, finding these spots where you can really get <laughs> far away from the road and some of these peninsulas. So let's go ahead and come on to this waypoint at a radius of one mile. Save that and come here to where the road gets close here and do another one mile. Okay, so it looks like we have, I'll close this window and there's a trailhead that comes out to here so let's just add a waypoint there real quick access save add a radius of one mile okay but to get to this point you already had to walk about a mile so you're looking at another two miles to get here on foot so we're looking at this area here looks pretty interesting so let's make a waypoint here and we're just starting to put some red X's at spots that look interesting then we'll come back and dive in a little further use some of the other layers to analyze what might be there so that's a good spot um, all of this is going to be you know, if we add a radius here, all this is going to be really within a mile of the road. And there's definitely going to be the potential for elk. I'm just not going to make it kind of the first spots I go check out. This country is all going to be pretty accessible by road and trails. So I guess one of the things, this looks interesting for a couple reasons. So if you look at this chunk of BLM here, uh, we got the highway on this side. We got a river, so that's blocking access. And we actually have another unit right here. And so anybody um, hunting this unit line or this area, they might be pushing elk back and forth, but they can't actually follow the elk into this side of the unit. And anybody else is going to have to come a mile this way or there might be some access down here off this road and then you got to hike up you have to hike up all of this here which doesn't look too exciting um, and actually you could come here and to get here it's going to be a mile we got our mile radius but if I put a waypoint if I could get up this BLM road looks like there's a road here BLM these are usually open I don't know till I get there but I could actually come in from a different unit which is a pretty cool um, tip and tactic so if I came in from this other unit and thought about accessing my unit from another unit a bordering unit it might actually give me um, an advantage over some other people so if I said this is my access site here and save that and say I want to get over to this spot. Let's do the line distance. We'll do the freehand draw so I can just kind of trace the path here. And to get over to this ridge is going to be 0.8 miles. So it's going to be two tenths of a mile um, shorter. Looks like I have elevation gain of around 500 feet. And if I come from this access point, to come around here and 
then you know up this ridge and then down save that one that's 1.1 miles so three tenths of a mile longer and about 600 feet in elevation gain so <clears throat> I think if I was going to access this area I'd probably try to come in from the BLM in the neighboring unit and come across here this also lets me You could actually actually come in and hike and sit on this knob here. This knob right here, and this would be a pretty good glassing point to actually glass this. Um, if you come in two or three, day, three days early, let's make a little glassing knob here. Uh, glassing. I like to make my glassing areas white waypoints to keep them organized. So if I'm on my two or three day scouting before the season opens, um, this seems like a really interesting spot to come in. I got access off the road or trail here. I think I could probably get in there, hike up to this ridge, and then you could glass this whole hillside, see what's coming out. Um, looking at the imagery here, when you look at the imagery, it's just this looks really thick. Um, dark um, hard to glass I mean there definitely could be elk in here so it's gonna be you're gonna want to just get in here and sit and see if you can see you know something moving at first light or dark um, this would be kind of a tricky spot to hunt so I'm gonna put a spot there to check out um, it's not an a spot but I think it's definitely a spot that could be sneaky and could hold a bull later in the season away from this pressure like you got the road and the river here where nobody's coming up you got a neighboring unit where they can't hunt across this border so it does look interesting. Let's save that spot. All right, let's look at the southern part of the unit and see if we can find another spot or two. Okay, so now we're down here looking at the southern part of the unit, and we got um, we got our parking spot here, and this trail goes in. So you got about a mile hike that way, and then a mile radius here. We can get to the road here and get out a mile. And, you know, there's some other spots here. So this looks pretty tight. Um, might be kind of tricky, but you might be able to get into some elk a little bit unmolested here along the private boundary and this public boundary here. Let's go ahead and flip that and get it into 3D. So this might be a spot to check out. Um, the nice thing is, is you have a road right here. And so one of the th tactics you can do is, is on your scouting trip or, uh, you know, a couple days before your hunt, if you're there checking all these areas out, is you can actually park here and maybe glass some of this, um, see if there's any elk coming in and out of these boundaries or along the forest service here uh, before you hike all the way in, right? So if you can go ahead and find elk, um, it's always nice to find out before you start hiking around all this stuff like go around find them don't just start hiking around scaring scaring them out of everywhere if you can glass all these boundaries take a morning or an evening see if there's elk moving uh, around there before you just come in here and hunt it so it can be a lot more efficient that way so i'll make a spot there that might be a like a c spot uh, we'll put you know i like hunting these boundaries here if there's gonna be elk moving back and forth is there then it'd be, you know, somebody on private hunting opening morning, you know, the rancher, an outfitter, you know, somebody has permission there that's moving elk around, you know, pay attention to that. If you start seeing people scouting on the private side of stuff too, like take note of that. That can tell you like how elk might move when it comes opening day. So we got a cool spot there. And then I think we got a B spot down here. Let's get down into this country here. Um, so we've got the road coming in here, dead ends at this unit boundary. We've got a road coming in here, and we've got a nice trail that's coming through here. Kind of see it on the map here, so it goes through some of these parks here. Uh, we've got definitely a lot of water, a lot of creeks, some lakes up in here. Um, turning this to 3D, this gets pretty rugged on this side. Um, not a lot of cover. We're at 10,000 feet here, so that's pretty good country. We got a lot of cover and trees in here, um, but we also got 
some more mountain ranges here that might be pushing elk in. So let's take a look at a few other layers and see what's going on here. So if I come into map layers, we've got all of our trails and rec layers already on. Let's come into hunt and turn on wilderness areas. So we've got our wilderness layer on and you can actually see it borders this unit now. So there's not to be any vehicles, anything motorized. Um, and that actually usually means it's a little bit steeper and bigger mountain ranges. We can see, yeah, we got some big mountain ranges here. So depending on the time of year, there could definitely be elk moving from these higher elevation through this wilderness area. So this seems like a really cool spot to come in and check out as well. Um, you're going to be far enough away from some people and you might actually be able to catch some migratory elk coming through. So let's make that a spot here and save that one. Okay, and then we're looking at this side. We've got just a sliver on this side of the unit. Um, they've got this road, these roads that kind of parallel each other and there is, you know, this forest service in between here. All of it's within a half mile of a road, um, except for, let's turn on a radius up here. So I'm not too interested in that southern, this kind of southwest side of stuff right now. Might have to come back there if we're not seeing anything in other spots. Uh, but let's put a radius here of a mile. So we're just really mapping this out and, you know, this sheep mountain area looks interesting. Looks like there's some trails along the top here, maybe some roads coming in from the other unit. Um, so it might be a backup plan to get up here. These roads look pretty well established. <clears throat> and maybe dead end, dead ends here at the Forest Service boundary. So people can people can get in here. It's pretty thick. Um, and let's look in 3D. Look in 3D here. This is going to be pretty accessible. People are going to come up over this ridge. But, you know, this is... Wouldn't be, be like another C spot for me, I think. Could be pretty accessible. It's going to be pretty hard to hunt with a rifle. Um, pretty thick, so... Let's put a waypoint there just to keep track of it. Kind of put a waypoint right in the middle of it so you know when you get there this is kind of the, the furthest away from everywhere that we scouted we'll save that one all right let's go back to the 2d map get that north up and let's play around with a couple more layers to see if that helps us out okay so i've been sitting here for a while it it, it, it takes a while to do this scouting so putting in all these access points um you know, your map starts to get a little busy and I'll go back and maybe remove some of these afterwards. But I think the, the ideas are like mark where the roads are, mark the access sites, use that radius tool to kind of map out where um, you think other hunters are gonna be. I'm gonna, I got five red waypoints here that I think are kind of some ABC spots. Um, and then also like, as you're doing the scouting, you can like uh, mark maybe good campsites. I marked a, a glassing waypoint here in white, right? That I would use to glass, so. Let's play around with some of the layers now that you're gonna to wanna to look at to see how it affects your hunt as well. Okay, so we turned on the wildfire layer and this is pretty sweet. Um, looks like there's one old fire here and it's from 2017. Um, and if we zoom in here, yeah, you can actually see it on the aerial imagery here uh, where these trees are a little burned. So that's pretty cool. And we got some food sources here, four years old, that's gonna definitely have some regrowth and it's feeding right into this kind of hot spot that we mapped out for an A spot. So um, that's getting me excited. The other thing to notice about this spot, let's rotate the map here, is you can also glass this from this road. So you can come in here and spend you know a day or two before the hunt glass some of this, see if there's elk in here. 
They're going to be coming down to the private, maybe getting a drink here. There might be some pressure, you know, from the outfitter here. So this is, this has a lot of potential. Um, so to get in here, you got a couple different ways. You could hike a mile, come down this ridge, shoot across right here. Okay, we're back uh, in 2D here. Let's turn off the fire layer. Let's look at some other layers. Timber cuts, let's see if there's been any forest service. Nothing recently done here. Let's see, we can show you an example somewhere else maybe. Is there any up here? Yep, okay, so here's what forest service looks like. Uh, timber cuts, the year, the acreage, all that stuff. We don't have any in our unit, so we don't have to worry about that. And I think that's good there. Let's go to one more layer. Let's go to our new tree species and habitat layer. And I'm guessing most of this unit is going to be coniferous trees. But let's go ahead and turn on the deciduous. Um, I'd like to see kind of what's different in this unit. And if we zoom in here, we can see we got some white starting to show up. So that's aspen birch. So um, we're going to be in here later in the fall. So the leaves are going to be off. So these areas are actually going to be easier to glass. Um, they're not going to be full of pine trees. And so this is kind of, we've got our burn here. And that's going to be pretty open for glassing still. And this is going to be pretty open for glassing. So that still looks like our A spot. If we come over here to our kind of forested spot here, this is going to be, yeah, still pretty thick. There's no aspen really in here. That's going to be pretty hard to glass and hunt. Come down here to our other spot here. This is kind of our B spot, and that's just going to be all coniferous trees as well. But this one looks pretty good. This is kind of that spot that might be, you might be able to get some elk coming through here, and it's pretty glassable along this edge. Uh, you know, they like this aspen and birch to be feeding on as well, along with kind of the sage and, and brush underneath. So this, this has some potential here. So it looks like we're kind of lining out with our A spots or this one, and we got kind of two B spots, I'd say, here and here. So I kind of focus on this string around these property boundaries and then along this property boundary. Let's take a look. We got one more kind of cool layer in Colorado. Uh, we have the species activity. So you can come in here and turn on uh, migration routes, winter range, all that stuff for all these different species. Um, each state has some different layers in their layer settings. So be sure to go into your state specific layer, dig around, see what's in there. So if we turn that on, we'll see they're actually, I'm going to look at these. There's, there's elk everywhere in this unit, right? So the summer range is like just covering the entire map. Winter range, I think this is such a small unit that really you're going to find during hunting season an elk anywhere in here. Uh, but what I'm curious about is just these elk migration corridors. And so these are the white and red striped areas. And so it looks like our hypothesis that the elk are going to migrate out of this wilderness area down into this unit is true so this is a good spot to catch potentially elk migrating they're coming through here as well so i think anywhere on here on this corridor and let's just go into 3d because if you're sitting here on this boundary it looks like you could actually you know potentially get up high on this peak here right and you could actually sit here and watch potentially elk migrating out and through here so that's a great spot. That's good to know. Uh, let's flip this back around. And there's actually elk, like, <laughs> this is funny. There's actually an elk migration corridor, like, right through the waypoint I mentioned here. And looks like they're going to come down here and winter on this range. And so this, this whole stretch seems like where a lot of the elk are going to end up uh, coming. And if we go back to kind of our spot over here, you know, there's probably going to be some elk, but it doesn't look as good like i said like you can find an elk anywhere in here during rifle season uh, a lot of elk are shot from the road during the migration like this doesn't limit my my practice of like where you should be hunting uh, if it's snowing heavy like by all means like 
be following these roads, looking around, looking for tracks, like be efficient. Don't just hike in and sit here for four days if you can cover all this country and look for tracks and elk sign. Um, but if you're looking to get away and like find that sanctuary spot where a bull might be, this is gonna be my A spot in this unit. So, so just a short recap of everything I did. I came in, turned on public, private, um, saw if there was any like ranches or anything in the walk-in programs or wasn't in this unit. So I know where my public private is, where I can hunt. Next, I came in, turned on the trails, the MVMUs for the Forest Service, know where I can drive or not. And then I just started marking all the access spots, uh, where everybody's in a park, where the lookouts are on the roads, and then just started adding radiuses using the radius tool uh, to figure out like the distances and how far away to get from everybody. And then you just start diving in, like looking at the aerial, looking at the roads, turning on uh, the, fi the historical fires, timber cuts, turn on the deciduous tree layer. I really like that new layer we just launched, which shows me all the aspen areas in a unit. I think that's super useful. And uh, then in Colorado, you can turn on the migration routes. So I just mapped all that out um, and just got some spots to check out. So if I'm gonna go there, I'm gonna come you know, up this road and just start glassing some of my A, B, and C spots the two or three days before the hunt try to find where the elk are and uh, get one picked out for opening day. So that's kind of how I attack this unit, lots of ways to do it, but uh, just spend that time e-scouting, kind of make your own plan, your own pattern for how you want to attack this stuff. But those are some of my tips. Hopefully that gives you some ideas for your next scouting trip.